Greetings and welcome to episode number seven of Repligence 2021 webinar series. My name is Wesley Straub, Director of Marketing here at Repligen. Repligen takes intensification of cell culture very as a very, very important topic. And we have two technologies that promote intensification of cell culture. The first one is Excel, and then we have a new technology called Crossflow TFDF. And today's talk and topic is not really about one or the other technologies. It's really about application of those to gene therapy and specifically about AAV. There's a lot of data and several case studies about both technologies. For Excel, those span from vaccines to MABs to gene therapy. And for TFDF, we have some really interesting data around lentivirus in that application. If you want to hear more about those, we're going to include links to specific resources in the follow-up email to this webinar. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, to guide us through the story uh, for AAV intensification, we have Rachel Legman, who is our Director of Technologies for Gene Therapy. She has a really rich history and lots of experience of putting end-to-end -end solutions for gene therapy as well as MABs together from all the way from process development all the way out to commercial manufacturing. So we're really lucky to have Rachel here today to deliver this story in a lot of rich context. Also joining us today in the Q&A portion of the webinar is Mike Bransby. Mike is the inventor of the TFDF technology. So it's gonna be a great resource to answer some of the more technical and detailed questions. And he's also been really involved in development of the early applications, including the lentiviral uh, intensification, upstream cell culture intensification, as well as the story that we're going to talk about today. Um, so a few housekeeping details about this webinar first, so that it can be shared with a broader audience that weren't able to make it today. It is recorded. So by participating in the webinar today, you are acknowledging that it's being recorded. Second, we have one poll question up. It really helps us understand what the makeup of the audience is and, um, and tune our messages and our topics in future webinars uh, so that we, we talk about the topics that are most interesting. So we really appreciate you opening up the small window and using that, that window to answer the one poll question. During the webinar, you can also use the same window to ask questions. It's really simple, self-explanatory, write your questions, submit it. You can see other people's questions and you can either, and you can upvote those. So if you like a question, you think that you really want it answered. Sometimes we get so many questions that we can't answer them all on that day. So if you really do uh, want to see that question answered, please give it a couple of votes. We like the participation, right? So uh, with that, I'm going to now turn it over to Rachel for today's topic, which is an AAV case study on increasing titer threefold with an integrated clarification. Thank you, Wes, for the introduction, and thank you all for joining today's webinar. Today, I'm excited to invite you to the journey of what it takes to elevate your viral vector production process to the next generation vector process, enabling you to increase your production yield by 3x fold through integration of innovative perfusion platform that support growth, continuous clarification, and lyset first step clarification. So let's start. As the number shows in this slide, the gene and cell therapy sector is maturing rapidly, and more patients than ever are going to benefit from it. From 2020 Alliances in Regenerative Medicine report and ASGCT report, we clearly see that the gene therapy pipeline is very strong. There are more than 1,800 candidates in various phases in clinical trial. In addition to the strong pipeline here, are additional two major brute forces that continuously positively impact the gene and cell therapy market. The regulatory approval rate, the number of approved drugs within the last five years has grown significantly. And the amount of investment, especially when we look at the investment occurs 
during the last two years, we see that during the whole 2020 year, the investment into this market was $19.9 billion. And only in the first half of 2021, it's reached already $14.1 billion. So the demand of viral vector depends on the dose required for certain disease and the global number of patients. For example, to treat 5,000 Duchenne muscular dystrophy patients per year, you need 4 to the power of 19 AAV particles, meaning that you achieve that with the current generation suspension process, you will need 700,000 liter which mean more than 350 of 2,000 liter scale bioreactors. From the figure shown here in this slide, it is clear that the gene and cell therapy market are already facing the major challenge that the supply is not meeting the high demand for viral vector required to treat uh, multiple indication or many other indication. In today's webinar, I'll show you through data generated from a collaborative study how we address two major challenges in the gene therapy today. Meet the demand and reduce the cost of the new complex modalities drug. The outcome of this case study will demonstrate how we increase the viral vector per bioreactor by integrating of perfusion and chlorification platform, reducing by more than 2x fold the number of bioreactors required to meet this demand. From, as you see from the table, and I'll prove it later, from 20 to nine leading to cost reduction of $162 million. The objective of this collaborative study, Repligen and IBET teams, is to evaluate the growth and the production using two perfusion platform integrated into the two liter bioreactor side by side in comparison to the batch mode process used by IBET team currently. The TFDF tangential flow defiltration and Excel ATF alternating tangential flow filtration, as you can see in this slide, the TFDF on the left side uses a combination of tangential and then filtration techniques in a single fil filters. This is a really innovative technology. This combination enables the perfusion during growth phase and replacing the defiltration during chlorification with high flow rate without fouling the filter and more than 10x reduction of 10 def filter surface area. Alternating tangential flow, the Excel perfusion system on the right side of this slide is created by an air vacuum power diagram moving upward and then downward, powered by an air within a pump head. With each short 10 or to 15 second cycle, a small backflush occurs at each end of the filter. This backflush prevents filter clogging and cell concentration of over 100 million cells per ml. In this study, the growth and the viability of HEC-293 cells in suspension bioreactor culture using TFDF, the green line, and Excel ATF, the blue line in the figure, a perfusion platform comparing to the conventional batch process, as you can see in the red line of the figure. When perfusion platforms were integrated into the current process, 
higher HEC293 viable cell density is observed when both platforms are used. Excel ATF or TFDF, we can reach and push the cell density to more than 15 million VCD per ml than the batch process reaching around 6 million VCD per ml. So this is really the idea behind it. So basically, the idea behind the integration of perfusion platform during growth is to reach high cell density at good exponential growth phase prior to transfection and therefore improving the vector production yield. For better transfection efficiency, you choose the mid-exponential phase and transfect the perfusion culture at 5 million cell per ml. Comparison to IBED batch process of 2.7 million cells per ml. And the idea is quite simple. We can increase the cell density at transfection with perfusion to get more cells transfected and subsequently increase the production of AAV vectors. Here we are demonstrating that both perfusion system, the Excel and TFDF, enhance the specific productivity by 1.6 and 1.8x fold, which means from 47,000 AAV particle per cell to 76,000 and 84,000 AAV per cells, respectively. The overall total of AAV8, as you can see on the right bar, all the way to the right, production yield is shown to be increased by more than 3x fold from 2.4 to the power of 14 viral genome per bioreactor to 7.8 and 7.5 to the power of 14 viral genome per bioreactor. The 3x fold viral vector enhancing is a result of both increase cell density at time of transfection and provide better growth condition for each cell to produce more efficiently and more vectors per bioreactor. IVET construct and process show that a significant amount of AAV8 was secreted to the spent media. Therefore, we decided to evaluate the transmission of the viral vector through both perfusion platforms. We are showing here that the TFDF platform recover 89% of the viral particle while maintain the integrity of the HEC293 cells. In principle, if you have a construct that more than 95 of the viral vector is secreted to the spent media, you can use the TFDF perfusion platform and clarification platform to continuously harvest your AAV product during the production. We already have demonstrated that I'm not going to touch during this presentation, that for secreted virus such as lentivirus and others, you can expand the production process and produce more viruses per suspension bioreactor simply by providing optimal condition to the cells to continue producing the virus. And you can do that by using the perfusion system of the TFDF. Since more than 50% of the AV8 in this case study was also associated with the cells, therefore ELISA's step required a time of harvest to release the AV product from the cells. In this case, we evaluate the performance of the perfusion system, TFDF 
and death filtration, the conventional death filtration, used side by side to clarify the harvest lysate. As we can see, and I'm not showing it here, same recovery yield as regular death filtration, removing the cell lysate and cell debris were achieved equally and similar between the two platforms. But the most important thing is that the TFDF perfusion platform enabling added value during the manufacturing. In addition to a great recovery yield, you are also providing higher flux, 450 LMH, leading to 4.5x faster process than the conventional death filtration. It also has a higher throughput. It is more than 300 liter per meter square versus 23 in the conventional death, death filtration, leading to more than 10x less death filtration surface area and less manufacturing footprint that I will show in the next slide. So overall in this slide, you can see that, uh, that the surface area of the death filtration on the green surface area and the red surface area is way, is almost three times the surface area of what the TFDF is taking during the footprints. So you definitely overall cost saving associate with lower death filtration footprint in the GMP manufacturing and storage area. Industry leading capacity reduces GMP storage by more than 2x. So basically you save space to augment death, not only during the manufacturing process, but also during the storage of this component while you are uh, meeting uh, the uh, manufacturing demand that you have to do. Repligen, in this slide I'm showing you that Repligen innovative integrated, integrated technology bring your end-to-end -end viral vector production and purification process to the next generation, enabling you to meet the viral vector commercialization demand and reduce the dose cost. Not less important is to demonstrate the benefit of integration of clarification into the production suspension bioreactor for better process simplification and reduce clarification surface area, reducing liquid and solid waste removal cost, and of course getting faster clarification step without compromising on AAV recovery yield from Lyset. In today's case study, we have demonstrated the added value of integration of perfusion platform to AAV production upstream and clarification steps. But we can increase the yield of other fragile vectors such as lentivirus, oncolytic virus and exosome using the same strategy of integrating the perfusion platform TFDF into your suspension production manufacturing bioreactor. Also, we can provide downstream platform and consumable such as TFF and Chrome platforms and consumables to enhance your vector recovery yield, enabling meeting the commercialization demands. And that's maybe will come in next seminar that we are planning to do. We can assess the cost of manufacturing per year, taking only into account the cost of major raw material and consumable used in the process, like cell culture media, plasma, nucleases, filter, chromatography media. We see 
that for hemophilia, for example, the implementation of perfusion processes reduced the number of 2,000 liter from 74 to 25 batches. The cost saving by doing that per year can be almost $24 million. With integration of Repligen platform into the current process, you'll successfully be able to meet the viral vector demand, at the same time, make the drug more affordable by reducing the cost per dose. I would like to, to, uh, to send many thanks to the both teams, IBET teams and Repligen teams that enable to share this data of uh, upstream side with you and the clarification. And I'll open the floor currently to any question and comments that you might have. Thank you very much for your for listening. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, it's a great set of data around intensification that, um, you know, if you connect it with the other sets of data, we, we have TFDF or lentivirus, we have a lot of Excel data around vaccines and maps, but it really is one of our first and best sets of data uh, for AAV, for the cell culture intensification. So uh, great stuff. Not unexpected, we have a lot of questions <laughs> for you and Mike. So hi to Mike. Uh, there's Mike Gransby, join us, uh, inventor of the TFDF. So thanks for joining, Mike. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, I think in order to uh, in order to get through the questions, I'm going to propose that we start with some some ones that are on the cell line. So we have some easy questions around the cell line. So um, I'm going to start with a, one which says, which cells were used for this study? Hopefully, it was one cell line. Um, I think Mike or Rachel, either one of you could. Field that question. Yeah, I can I can take that. It was it's a good question. It is Hecto 93T, and we all know that people are moving into the Hecto 93 because of the regulatory, but that's what we had as a collaboration. So we did what we got now, but we are seeing the same impact when we are using uh, the Hecto 93, the regular one. Of course, there is difference between clone and clone, but for this specific case study, it was HECTO 93T. Okay. All right. Um, next, I think, so I think when I look at the questions, they go from a little bit around the cell line to around the process and then to the clarification. And, and, and there's a couple questions around size and footprint. So I'm going to go, I'm going to pick the questions and pull the questions that have more to do about running the process. So we have one, um, is there a stability issue for the perfusion process? And I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if they're referring to stability of the product or stability of the cell line production, but uh, maybe Mike or Rachel, you could speak to stability of the process. I can talk about yeah, the cell themselves, but Mike, maybe you should start with the platform if the question related to the skid itself. Correct. So there, there is no issue in light of stability from the cell perspective. Uh, the cells maintain a uh, high viability. Um, uh, it, it maintains even viability after uh, the transfection. Um, so we're able to maintain the cells, but uh, some of the, the cells are um, putting out some of the virus and that virus is coming out. So we're able, as Rachel shared, we're able to harvest uh, some of that virus that's extracellular uh, away from the reactor. So it, it makes it even more stable from the virus perspective. Uh, and maybe from the filter side, uh, it is going through a long process. So there is a stability of the filter for a long time. With gene therapy, definitely the process can go up to 10 days, including growth and production. Uh, with uh, with the CHO cells that you can go to higher uh, length of process, it was also stable. 
if the question was related to the filter itself integrated to the process along the full process. Okay. Um, so if we stay around that topic of, of kind of the, the running of the process, we have one question is, do you have to add any extra re reagents to keep the, the viable cell density so high? Like basically, I think they're asking, you know, I know that cell retention and growing can, but does anything have to be changed on the media side in order to go from like the five to the 15 uh, increase in cell density? I can, I can start if it's okay. So basically the idea behind perfusion is that you are providing fresh media continuously into the bioreactor and at the same time you eliminate waste produced by the cells uh, like lactic acid, ammonia and so on in order to make a better microenvironment for the cell. That's why we are seeing uh, a better specific productivity so each cell produce more vector in the suspension mode in with with a comparison to the batch mode that you are not refreshing the media every day and uh, also you can see that not only the specific productivity is higher it's also the uh, total amount of cells is higher so we didn't for this case study we didn't add any element because in this case study the base batch uh, process was a little bit lower than usually people currently have in the market. So we enhanced the cell density at time of inspection from 2.7 to 5 million. <clears throat> Some good batch uh, process that many customers currently have, you can with the batch reach to 5 and then you have to push it to 10 with our system. So we had uh, in this case study, a low baseline. But having said that, it show and prove the concept of enhancing the cell density at time of transfection. But since the baseline was low, we didn't add any uh, element to the media. It was just the fresh media. If you have a good baseline process and you push to 10, I would highly recommend to add element like uh, growth factor and so on in order to push better uh, the cell density to higher number. That's my input. And, and just to follow up that the DNA per cell, the transfection ratio was the same. Uh, so it's per cell. Yeah. So that's a good note, Mike, because I, I think the cure, I'm, I'm going to go to a couple other questions because I think what I, what I hear in the, kind of the pattern, the questions is like, if I add a cell retention device, either XL or TFDF, like, um, I have to get a change everything else around the process, right? Like, or what does it just happen? Like, do it, is it a complete redevelopment? I, and I think what I hear from the two of you is that uh, your media can stay the same, right? I'm going to go to the next question, which is how much antifoam was used for perfusion runs compared to batch? Same nature of a question, both perfusion and batch. Did you use the same oxygen and, and dissolved oxygen control? So maybe talk to that, but I think it's the, that overall it's your thing, like how much has to change in terms of anti-foam supplements, media, when you add the cell retention device. I mean, if we could talk about that maybe even on a broader level. Yeah, one note I would add just to clarify that, we maintain the ratio of DNA and transfection reagent the same when we increase, they enhance the cell density. And this yes. step needs to be optimized further as you push the cell to higher cell density in the same media volume, you, you will uh, see, observe toxicity due to high DNA and transfection reagent. So this needs to be optimized. But with this case study, we use the same ratio just to uh, elaborate on and clarify this point. Yeah, and for other uh, item like antifoam or other, I, I think they're very similar between the batch and the uh, perfusion. Uh, I don't have the data right in front of me, but I'm pretty sure they're very similar. So I don't think there's too much of a change for your media or for your conditions. Uh, for your oxygen, obviously, will have to go up because the cells are growing. But um, that's a 
automated process usually. Okay. Um, all right, more around the process. Again, again, I think questions around, so the next question around timing. Like, did the buy reactor run for the same shorter or longer time with the higher BCD to get to the 3X yield? It's, it's of course yeah, from the graph, it, it, ran, <clears throat> it ran longer. We were able to extend yeah. it because it's, it, it's, the growth phase the was only so way you can, Yeah, the only way you can save this time and make it similar if you sit with higher cell density and then you shrink the growth. But if you sit with the same seeding density, uh, then you you have to run it longer in order to have another doubling time for extending the cell density. In this case, it was one day longer. Yeah. Okay. So um, just in the interest of time, uh, and there's several more questions uh, in the background that we probably won't get to, but we will, if I, we don't get to your question here, we promise that we will follow up with an answer within 24 hours. But there are a bunch, there are several questions here that bundle around harvest. So maybe if I, instead of one by one, right, a couple of them talk about size and footprint, um, and a couple of them talk about what filter is required and what the turbidity is. So I think maybe, so I, and this is the hard part, right? Sometimes you can either say one thing or nothing. And I think the hard part about today's, uh, today's story is that basically you can intensify you can get more product, you can get to the higher densities, but your clarification and your harvest unit operation is going to be really simplified. So I do think we should we should talk about that for a second. Um, maybe just start with the footprint, because we have three questions that talk about how much space the system takes up. I think it's a really good question, probably for Mike, um, to talk about if you set up either Excel or TFDF, how much space, what does it look like around the bioreactor when you put the system in um, from a space point of view? For space, it's a minimal for the hardware. Uh, so for, for the TFDF, uh, it's about two by three feet. So that's six square feet. Um, mm -hmm. And that holds the filter. You connect the flow path directly to the bioreactor and it takes about five minutes, everything's sterile. Uh, so it's quick, easy setup. Um, so the, the footprint's small for that. Uh, but that leads to the second question, um, do you need a secondary filter uh, <clears throat> and then also the turbidity coming through and also continuous. So that system then can pull off if it's an extracellular virus um, or part of the AB could be extracellular. You can pull that off continuously. It's really low turbidity at that point. Uh, you could potentially go to a capsule filter um, uh, for the next step. Uh, but it doesn't have to be continuous. You're able to do it uh, also a batch mode with the TFDF, that is a harvest batch mode. And that's what we also show in this. You can harvest in a continuous mode and then you can uh, lyse the cell and do a harvest uh, after lysis. Uh, again, that turbidity is gonna be much higher because of all the lysed cell components, but the TFDF was still able to make it through uh, the lysed harvest uh, and that turbidity obviously will you will require a secondary filter or a 0.8.2 that is uh, you know pretty large so that that is part of the footprint uh, that is in that calculation for that secondary step uh, for the harvest uh, but it's a lot less footprint in light of multiple stages of up to three stages I've seen for uh, depth filters uh, normal depth filters yeah right. so you yeah. add can I add a note here? So I want to expand this question to uh, the future generation of capsid that we are going to see. So if mm. you have a capsid or a plasmid or a plasmid that construct that produce mainly secreted AV, so the turbidity that you are starting the load into the TFDF is way lower. So the footprint can change based on your specific project process. If you have envelope virus that is budding out from the cell, of course you need uh, less surface area and maybe the C train will be simplified by then. But in this case study, we show, as Mike said, the worst scenario that you have to lyse the cells and you start with a very 
high lies their turbidity. Therefore, with even the conventional death filtration, you need a train in order to continue clarify that for the following step. So this is just to bring us to the future benefit of this system as the biology improve along with the process itself. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a really, really good point. Okay, so last question of the day. Again, promise to follow up on questions that we didn't answer directly here, but I think it's relevant because it connects, it also has the most votes, but it also connects into footprint and I think, you know, ease of execution in the GMP suite, um, which is with respect to GMP suite size, can you comment on the volume of medium required to carry out the perfusion? How much space is this taking, right? It's really clear that people value the space inside their GMP suite. They're very curious about, um, about what it's gonna take, not just on the system. I, what I see is the question broadening out, not just from the system, but in order to execute the whole process, what is going to be required. And I think, Mike, you, you might want to take that one just to talk about the different modes that it can be run in. Like it, like it hints at how the earlier lentivirus was run in kind of like a perfusion fed batch mode versus continuous perfusion. And that's um, up to them about how they run it. Correct. Yeah, there are, there are different options uh, with the TFDF. You can do uh, just a cell expansion if you want and then um, not do the perfusion and then do a harvest at the end. You could do the cell expansion with the TFDF or ATF uh, and then uh, do a regular perfusion, pulling out the product uh, if it's needed. Uh, so it really depends on your process. Typically, we're around half a volume vessel per day uh, to one volume vessel per day. So if it's a 200 liter reactor, uh, that's 200 liters per day. It's not a huge amount of footprint for 200 liters. Um, uh, for one day exchange um if you're doing uh, you know five days then that you know you would have to uh make that that media for that um for that day of vessel volume mm -hmm. okay yeah maybe maybe Rachel. i should add a note here follow up note to mike uh point is that the nature of perfusion is that you are going to use more media this is the nature no matter what, you need to have more media because either you are using uh, one uh, uh, volume of bioreactor per day or half volume based on your optimization, and you will do the same thing on the production side during the production. But our calculation for the cost effectiveness is including the volume of the media. And it's very clear that I intensify the potent uh, viral vector produced per, per bioreactor, in this case was 3x, is reducing significantly the impact of how much media you are adding to a regular batch bioreactor. So that's bring you an added value, even though you are adding volume of media. Uh, if you are talking about uh, the, mid, the buffer you need in order to prepare the TFDF and then post preparation after the uh, process, you don't need to do that with the TFDF as you are doing with the conventional uh, defiltration. Therefore, you have a saving on the volume of the buffer used with the TFDF, for example. So, so mm -hmm. this question is both our different direction, but uh, mm -hmm. our cost uh, analysis were, were including all those assumptions. Yeah, that's a really good point because it goes beyond, it's like the system has to be uh, kind of considered and then the media, but then because uh, clarification is integrated, you don't have to worry about as many depth filters. You don't have to worry about the depth filter skid. You know, there's a lot of things there or even the buffer to wash out the depth filters, all that has to be considered. I think that's one of the reasons why we really uh, recommend if you're interested in it, you know, uh, contact us, let us know, get in, have a nice long conversation with somebody like Rachel, who has all that experience about putting the end to end solution together at different scales, um, all the way out to manufacturing. 
Okay, so for the purpose of time, we have to wrap up now. There will again be a follow-up email with different resources available around us around intensification in general for cell culture, um, but especially around gene therapy. And I'm just going to note that um, you know we've we published a study on lentivirus earlier in the year, right? And this is our first. I feel like Rachel and Mike. This is our first published data around AAV. So it's 3x increase in productivity. And our first step is really exciting. I think it's just the start. So um, I think Agreed. we're going to wrap it up there. I thank you both for uh, joining today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. All right. Thank you. Have a